too far away from there. I used to live uh, fairly close to Baltimore. Uh, so uh, I got a call from Microsoft that they want to invite me for an interview in Dubai. Uh, I got excited. I went there and I got to got to meet like six or seven engineers working there at Microsoft and they interviewed me. I had a fairly long day. So I come back, come back to Lahore, and a week later I get this like uh, probably one of the most impactful email in my life that I've been selected as a software engineer. And I traveled from Lahore to Seattle to join Microsoft as a software engineer. I want to walk through my personal journey for the next 14 years. And I want to talk about that, how that shaped my own personal perspective. And maybe leave a message that might help you shape your perspective. So as I was going to Microsoft as a software engineer, the only thing that was in my mind that I'm going there to build amazing, amazing tech. And with the passage of time, I think for me, on a personal level, it became a lot more important to understand what is the impact of that technology that we are building. And as that further evolved, I think the part that became a lot more important for me was what was the overall societal and economical implications that my work had, or all of the, my colleagues' work had on the entire community. So as I walk through my journey, I, I want to I wanna really focus on that last part. That was the work that we were doing. What was that impact like? So I joined Microsoft Search and Bing in 2008. We were roughly 100 engineers, and there was only one idea that we all had. We want to build a search engine. I'm sure most of you use Google, but there is also another search engine called Bing.com. So we, we all went up and we were like, started building Microsoft Search and Bing. So I worked in Bing for four years. When I left in 2012, we were powering 25% of the entire internet search traffic. And that meant we were powering billions of queries monthly. So billions of people across the world were able to access information that they were looking for. So there my career took a turn when, when I joined next slide because this doesn't seem to be working. Where I joined um, another company that most of you might have heard of, eBay. So eBay is a marketplace. So eBay connects sellers and buyers. So I just want to talk about like with the technology and the product that we were building, it enabled 20 million plus sellers to sell their product over the internet. Does anyone have an idea like how many employed workforce do we have in this country, in Pakistan? So roughly we have 60 million people who are part of the entire workforce that we have in this country. And we are the fifth largest country now in the world. So 20 million sellers means that nearly one third of the entire workforce of Pakistan was able to make money and sell on eBay. They were able to generate $60 billion worth of sales or GMV that as we call it a marketplace for them. And that what $60 billion means, do people have an idea of like what is the total consumer spending in Pakistan? So in Pakistan, the total consumer spending is nearly like $280 billion. So you can imagine like nearly 25% of the entire consumer spending was being spent on this one platform eBay and powering 20 million sellers across the world. And then I went on and I worked for another place called Pinterest. Any Pinterest users here? Quite a few of you. So we were like an early day startup back then, very humble beginning, small office, few people. And as I look at how that ecosystem has built up, today there is a community of more than 500 million people that use Pinterest 
on a monthly basis, and they have generated $3 million plus worth of revenue. And the last one that I worked for was Facebook. And at Facebook, I'm sure I don't have to ask anymore that how many of you use Facebook, because pretty much every one of us do. And at Facebook, it's a community of 3 billion plus people today, and the revenue that they generated in 2023 is $134 billion. I had just quoted the total consumer spending of Pakistan. This is nearly half of total consumer spending that we have in this country. So that is the amount of revenue generated by that. So as I, as I talked about my journey, so went there in 2008, this is the next 30, 40 years of my life, working on products, figuring out how they're impacting economies and societal impact across the board. Meanwhile, every year, I mean, most of my family was based here, I would come back. Some of my friends were working in the tech industry, building products here. And up here, like we, I would compare notes between what was happening there on the West Coast, mostly in Seattle and San Francisco area, and what was happening up here in Pakistan. And I could see that the ecosystem that was developing across me was completely different. Just to give you a perspective of that ecosystem that was developing around that is that the city I used to live in called Redmond, Bill Gates in early 1980s had decided that this is where he's going to make the Microsoft headquarters. It was a town like Faisalabad or Gujarwala, that very, very small town, actually, to be honest, smaller than some of those like third, third level town in USA. And today when I look at that, where I used to live, it's a community of almost like most of the products that I use across the world that I built there. But I think that the question that I was asking myself is that are such ecosystems really possible outside of that community or outside the first world? But I think something really started, interesting has started to happen in the last decade or so. And similar startup ecosystem or tech ecosystem have started to emerge in different, different regions. And one of the reasons that I really want to quote here I think that was a personal inspiration for me, is like what was happening in, in Latin America. Because a lot of my friends in these companies that I just talked about, they were like, oh, we are leaving our company because we are going back to Brazil and Argentina and joining the startups or the companies uh, in, those, in, those, in those places. And one company that I want to particularly talk about that emerged from there is called, which many of you might not have heard of, which is a very popular company in Latin America, is called Rappi. And they are generating today an annual revenue of more than $4 billion, and they are powering tens of thousands of businesses, like eBay was powering, sitting in the US. But I think one, one aspect that I really want to emphasize here is, is the number of new startups that came out of that one, one tech company called Rappi. So Rappi is a super app, so a lot of businesses use it to get to the consumers across the Latin American region. So imagine this way, let's say we have 150 people sitting in this hall. We start a company and 50 of us went on and built an amazing new company out of it. And you can see how the multiplier effect would kick in and what would be the impact on the entire ecosystem. So such an effect started to appear in Latin America, which was not nearly as advanced as what I was noticing in, in Silicon Valley area. So I think Another interesting question that comes is that some of these companies, some of these ecosystems that we are talking about, and we hear the term business, we hear the term economies and everything, why are, why are they so important? What is so different about them? So I think I want to I wanna emphasize on a few key points here. The, the first one is that by design, they, they are scalable. And what it means by that is that, think about it this way, that if someone opens a store in Lahore and they want to expand, they have to go open a store at other part of Lahore, then they have to open a store at different. For every store that they're opening, they have to figure out capex investment and figure out like all the logistical issues involved in that. For a company like eBay, they never had to worry about that. Once they were like popular in one city, they could easily go to the entire region, they could easily go to the next country as well. So they are by definition scalable. The other beautiful thing that happens is, is this amazing network effect. That as these systems start to grow, 
the, the usefulness and their impact start to really again multiply. An example would be, think about it this way, in the early days of Pinterest, there were only 10 million users that were using it and generating pins that those 10 million people could discover. But as soon as the user base grew from 10 million to 20 million, now every user could discover new pins that are generated by 20 million people. And the usability of the platform would continue to go up. So that network effect were really kicking in and helping those tech, tech ecosystems. They have regional, global reach that we just talked about. They, don't have, they are not limited by boundaries, by any, any particular boundaries. And the other thing that I think I want to call out, which is one of the most beautiful things, is what, what, I, what I call democratization. So think about it this way, before the era of TikTok or Instagram coming, if someone had to show their talent, they had to figure out a way to appear on television. How many people in a day could appear on television and, and show, show their talent? What they have really done is that they have enabled pretty much everybody to go there. And we have seen the wave of influencers that were created in the last, last few years. And same is the case with eBay and other any marketplaces that we can think of. There are new sellers that are popping up. For them to invest in a store was nearly impossible. So it doesn't work in that model of rich getting richer. It, it works on a model of providing democratization across the ecosystem. And I think last thing which I believe is the most important part is that this multiplier effect that we have just noticed, that I just called out with Rappi as well. So generally what happens is that, I could use the example of Kareem here. So many startups, in the region were created by people who worked at Kareem. So as a result of that, what happens is that when our early seeds of startup ecosystem or these tech of startup ecosystems are, are planted, I mean, it really starts to grow fast and everyone who's part of that start to make a new bubble out of it. So what happens is 2021. With this, with this idea, with this conviction, I went the other way around from Seattle to Lahore in 2021. And this time I was like, I want to be, with this conviction, I want to be part of this ecosystem, which is super important that I can truly believe in transforming economy. Uh, what we lost was uh, what I call LAM. Um, and LAM is a, is a marketplace that connects seller with buyers in the fashion. So for buyers, we try to allow them to discover the beautiful Pakistan fashion that we have. And for the sellers, we try to provide them a platform so they can reach to all those, to all those consumers. So in these three years, since my return, that I've been a part of, so we have empowered more than 1,000 businesses. Uh, these 1,000 businesses have generated an employment of more than 15,000 people. Uh, this has enabled more than 10 million people across the world to discover the fashion that we have. And we have shipped our products to 100 plus countries, Pakistani products to 100 plus countries, 7,500 7, plus cities across the world. So I think I, I want to put this all together, this is my 14, 15 years journey, and ensure that I get this point across that why these ecosystems are super important and why it's important for the entire community to play a part in that. As I, as I returned and as I talked to a lot of people, I think one thing that I want to emphasize on is that to be part of this tech ecosystem, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a tech person. Obviously, every tech product or this ecosystem need tech people, but everyone who's involved in this doesn't have to be a tech person. Now, a prime example could be that adopting these tech products is also being part of the tech ecosystem. Joining in and helping with a marketing effort or operations effort or business effort is all part of enabling the tech ecosystem. So this is this part is super simple, important. And I think the other point that I want to call out is that when people think about its ecosystem, they immediately jump on that you have to be an entrepreneur to be a part of it. I believe that that's also a journey. Uh, and being part of the ecosystem, the first step might be to join join the ecosystem, and then that might be an entrepreneurial model. Uh, for a lot of people and create an ecosystem that we really need in emerging economies, especially in Pakistan. Uh, the other is mostly for uh, investment in infrastructure and policy. Obviously the government, uh, the, they, they have to play a role in creating the right infrastructure and policies that this entire ecosystem needs. And I think I want to call out that the other thing that we keep hearing about is that 
in eco start an ecosystem across the world, particularly in Pakistan, things going up and down. But if we look at the history of just Latin America or Middle East or every other region that we, we, we look at, I mean, we would notice that it takes time and persistence for this to be developed. But once it develops, they truly come and change the face of the economy. So I'm really hopeful that we have the ability to create one amazing tech ecosystem here. Some of the companies that I just talked about that I was part of, we are able to create similar companies up here and a different emerging economy in the world. Thank you so much.